Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to St. Philip AME Church, where our pastor is Dr. Anton Elwood. And we are glad that you have joined us in service. And those of you who have joined us online, whether you have created spaces in your homes, in your jobs, wherever you are, welcome to St. Philip. Now this morning, we want everybody to know that everybody is welcome here at the table. Will you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are welcome. Will you look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, you are welcome. All right, now let's come on. Let's put our hands together and we're going to lead you through this song. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it. Come on in. Come on in. Where the table is spread. And the feast. And the feast of the Lord.
my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness because of the house of the Lord our God I will seek thy good those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God blessed are they that dwell in thy house Lord I have loved thy habitation the place where thy honor dwelleth for the Lord is in his holy temple let all the earth keep silence before him let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer O sing unto the Lord a new song for he has done marvelous things make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth sing praises come on and sing praises all over St. Philip this morning it is the first Sunday in September come on I dare you to lift up praises in this house come on don't be ashamed of it this morning if you're glad that God has brought you to the ninth month of the year come on and celebrate God with me this morning down at the cross where my Savior died down where from cleansing from sin I cried there to my heart was the blood applied glory to his name we're gonna do it like one big choir this morning it's better when we do it together come on here we go down at the cross
y'all gonna get it one more time. Come on. Sing. Come on, we're going to sing it one more time. <laughs> we're singing glory to His name, precious name. Glory to His name. Say to my heart, what a love of life. be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Eternal and loving God, we have come into your house, gathered in your name to worship you. Because of who you are, we give you glory. Because of who you are, we give you praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. We come to magnify, to lift up the wonderful name of Jesus. You've been so good to us. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. God, we thank you how you watched over, how you protected, made a way out of no way, kept us on dangerous highways and skyways. You've been so good. We ask in the name of Jesus that you forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings, so gracious God. Touch us by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Create within us clean hearts. We thank you for this very first Sunday in September that we can partake of your holy communion, the body that was broken for us, the blood that was shed for us on Calvary's cross that will never lose its power. We give you glory and honor and praise because you are an awesome God. We thank you for our pastor, the first lady, oh gracious God, Lady Elwood. We thank you for them. And we ask that you continue to touch and keep them in the palm of your hands. Bless our pastor as he comes a little bit later to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Bless him, O oh gracious God, from head to toe. Bless and anoint him with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. O oh Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Have your way. Do your thing. Throw your weight around. We welcome you. We honor you. We love you. We need you. We depend on you. For there is no God like our God. It is in that wonderful name, that blessed name of Jesus that we pray. And all of God's children said, amen, amen, and amen. This morning's scripture reading will be coming from the 26th Psalm. Please stand if you are able. Twenty, the 26th Psalm. Declare me innocent, O Lord, for I have acted with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart. For I am always aware of your unfailing love, and I have lived according to your truth. I do not spend time with liars or go along with hypocrites. I hate the gatherings of those who do evil, and I refuse to join in with the wicked. I wash my hands to declare my innocence. I come to your altar, O Lord, singing a song of thanksgiving and telling of all your wonders. I love your sanctuary, Lord, 
the place where your glorious presence dwells. I have read Psalm 26, verses 1 through 8, God's word for God's people. sing it together. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sometimes we have to call it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, if you have to call him, sometimes sing it with us. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, call it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Some of us know him as a savior. Come on, sing savior. Savior, savior, savior. Yeah, savior, 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 savior. Yeah, 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 yeah. Savior, 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 yeah. His name is Jesus. Come on, let's call it one more time. Savior, 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 Savior. Oh, Savior, Savior, Savior. You are our Savior, Savior, Savior. His name is Jesus. Some of you came today not feeling well. No. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Going of the sun to indeed to the going down of the same sun on this Labor Day weekend. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're blessed and many of us are excited about the three-day weekend and many of us enjoy seven-day weekends because you're retired. Uh, amen. <laughs> you see? You see the maybe? <laughs> amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. Uh, the journey that 
the joy that comes after mourning virtual six week grief support group for anyone experiencing loss Thursday, September the 7th through October the 12th. That'll begin at 6 o'clock p.m. You can register by contacting the Reverend Dr. Priscilla Adams uh, concerning that. And also, Sister B. Williams wants to make sure that y'all get these free tablets. Amen. Uh, many of you all signed up after worship last week and she still has some more to give away. So you can see her immediately following service at the bookstore uh, to get more information about that as well. Now, please know that the church office will be closed tomorrow. Somebody shout closed. All right. So y'all stay healthy. All right. We'll need no issues, no problems. All right. Amen. Church office will be closed. We will be enjoying indeed the Labor Day holiday. Now, we're also excited about Bible study. It's coming. It's going to come September the 20th. That's going to be Wednesday, September the 20th uh, for Bible study. Uh, it's, it's going to be a three week intensive, the prayer intensive. And I want you all, if you can and will, to be a part of it. Now, someone told me, Pastor, I don't drive that night. Uh, amen. So we, we fix that for you. We're going to have two classes, two sessions, okay, for these three weeks. It's going to be one at 12 noon here and also one at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, so that'll capture everybody. And I don't want no excuses. Amen. I want to see all of you uh, in Bible study, and I'm excited about that. Again, the prayer intensive is coming September the 20th. We'll begin Wednesday, September the 20th. We'll go those three weeks strong uh, concerning this subject I'm excited about it. Now, uh, this is Labor Day weekend. Uh, they told me, this is what they told me. Now, I'm not saying this is what they told me, that we will be back to our Sunday's best on Sunday mornings. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. We enjoyed our tennis shoes and our jeans and our T-shirts. Now, we still believe in coming as you are. Amen. I believe in that. But at the same time, mothers, I need to see these hats. I need you to get the hats out the closet, mothers. I need these hats. I need these shoes. Brothers, I need to see these suits. Let me see what you got. Come on, dust off them Stacey Adams. I need to see them in church on Sunday morning. <laughs> Amen. We're excited about that uh, as well. We're, I mean, a hard push. We have so many amazing things coming up. We will finish the year strong here at St. Philip. And I am indeed excited about it. Now, right before I welcome our guests for this morning where are the now september birthdays if september is your birthday month come on stand let us see where you are september is your birthday month amen come on make some noise for the september babies in the building happy birthday to all of the september babies in the building all right what about september wedding anniversaries amen you got all right that sound like <laughs> I think Latanya Moore Copeland is excited about hers. Amen. And several others of you. Come on, happy anniversary. Come on, make some noise for them. God bless all of you. Happy anniversary. Uh, now, right before I welcome our guest, she's a part of our family, but I, I revere uh, this woman of God so much because I only had one homiletics professor my whole career. I've only had one person to teach homiletics. Homiletics one, homiletics two, and women's ways of preaching. Yes, right. Women's ways of preaching. I took that from the Reverend Dr. Carolyn Ann Knight. She's in the building this morning. Praise the Lord. She's a part of our family. I love you. Praise the Lord. She's a part of our family here. We're glad that she is here this morning. Now, what about other guests? Oh, are you a guest of St. Philip this morning? Please stand. Let us see where you are. If this is your very first time being here, we want to welcome you to St. Philip. Oh, yes. Come on, St. Philip. Make some noise for our guests. Remain standing. Remain standing. Now, if you're a part of St. Philip, come on, give them a fist bump. If you're sitting around them, wave to them. Tell them hello. I'm talking about love on them so much you scare them a little bit. Now, come on, everybody stand to your feet all over the building. Praise the Lord. Greet somebody around you. Oh, 
Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I also want to welcome, he's like family this morning. He's in the building. He's a uh, guard for the Atlanta Hawks, and he's come to worship with this morning. Trent Forrest is here. Come on, give God praise for him as well. Uh, amen. I won't ask him to stand because he's so low-key, but I give God praise for him. He's a part of our family, and we're excited about his presence here this morning. Now, I, what time is it now? Uh, it's giving time here at St. Philip. Uh, we're unashamed about giving. We're excited about giving. God has indeed blessed us to be able to give. One of the most exciting things is that God keeps replenishing our seed, keeps giving us over and over. Uh, there's a song that they used to sing, said, he keeps on blessing me over and over again. And I'm, I serve that kind of God that just keeps on blessing us over and over and over again. When I wake up in the morning, I'm blessed. When I go to bed at night, I'm blessed. When I'm going throughout my day, I'm blessed. Now, I just need all the blessed folk to just wave back at me this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are blessed. We are blessed this morning. So you see, this morning, God will continue to bless you. Your giving instructions are on your worship monitors this morning. We give via Givelify. You can also give uh, via Cash App. It's there on your screen. You can text to give. You can continue to mail it in. You can give right here in the main sanctuary. Uh, don't let the basket pass you by without sowing seed this morning. And so many of you uh, don't wait till Sunday morning to sow. You sow all week long, and we are grateful and blessed because of your seed sowing. Thank you so much for your continued generosity. Thank you for being seed sowers and believers trusting in God. The tithe, it is automatically blessed. It is literally obedience to the word of the almighty God. If you would like an offering envelope, the ushers will be glad to serve you this morning. As you give, put it in your heart, on your mind. God loves it. What kind of giver does God love? A cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. Smile on your face, joy in your heart. Glad to be in the service one more time. And we're glad about it. I'm going to pray over your giving. I want you to do the exact same thing. God, thank you. We consider it an honor and a privilege uh, to have seed to sow. Thank you, God, because you keep filling us up over and over and over again. You keep being more than enough for us. God, little becomes much when we place it into your hands. We are excited, oh God, because you have blessed us in the city, blessed us in the field. Blessed us when we come, blessed us when we go. God, you've given us a place and a time where we can move forward and be seed sowers. We won't use fixed income for a reason not to give because everyone in this building is on a fixed income. All of us are. So God, we take what we have and we sow it. We sow our 10%, oh God, it is our time. We believe wholeheartedly in it, oh God, because we've seen you do so many things over and over and over again. Thank you, God, for bringing us to this place in our lives. We give it to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say, amen. Come on, you can sow now. You can give now. If you're joining us online, streaming from our website or on Facebook, you can give with us as well.
Y'all missed it. That was a command. That wasn't a suggestion. That was a command. How many of you don't mind praising the Lord this morning? I said, how many of you don't mind praising the Lord this morning? The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Right quick, just ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, are you breathing? Well, if you're breathing, you need to be praising. If you're breathing, you need to be praising. I said, if you're breathing, you need to be praising. Come on and open up your mouth and give him praise, St. Philip. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Moments of prayer. I uh, was riding to worship this morning and um, for some reason I know breast cancer awareness is next month and I was thinking uh, say some people have drawn away from it you know because it became so popular and everybody wearing pink and Susan Coleman and all of these things and I understand that but the awareness of it should be deeper because there are so many that are being affected by it now. I was riding to worship. This was on my mind. Sister Paula Kimber came up to pray with me this morning as she always does. Toward the end of her prayer, she said, I don't know why, but God, I'm praying for those that are being affected by breast cancer. And it was confirmation in my spirit this morning to bring that to you. Because we know so many that are being affected right now. And some of us are affected right now. Some are survivors. I want to be clear. Man, it's okay if you clap for survivors. I don't want you to wait till the awareness comes next month in order for you to start checking it out. Start checking it out. Do what you need to do in order to understand what's going on. Those that are, have been affected are going through or you know someone, go ahead and call their name now. Go ahead, all over the building. Come on, call their names. Yeah. In Jesus' name, God touch them. Sister Joyce Hunter bless her now God. So many others are literally living in fear right now. Scared. Worried. But I pray now in Jesus name that the Lord will be a healer. Hallelujah. This will be beyond remission. This will be healing. I'm going to say that one more time. This will be beyond remission. This will be healing. Come on, Rev. I want you to bow your heads and I want you to close your eyes and I want you to just begin to pray. songs shall rise to thee. Lord, we're just so thankful that your ways are not our ways, that your thoughts are not our thoughts. And for what is impossible for us, we know that all things are possible with you. Lord, we know that obedience is better than sacrifice. So lead us guide us take us through your throne of grace and we lift up our petition about breast cancer because we all have been impacted one way or another 
Way back in the day, my mother passed from breast cancer in 1967. And my last funeral that I went to, my cousin succumbed. But you are a healer. When we go into the hospitals, we, we go for healing, not for hospice. So Lord, we just lift up a petition that we swing back to healing and away from the hospice. Keep us, guide us, direct us. You know us better than we know ourselves. Lord, and we trust you. We stand on your promises. You said that blessed is the person who perseveres through the storm. Because when they have withstood the test, they will receive the crown that the Lord has promised to us. So give us crowns on this side, Lord. And we'll be careful, also careful to give your name and your name alone, the praise and the honor and the glory that you deserve. And now, Lord, while we're in this spirit of worship, lock out anything that's keeping us from our breakthrough. We just go high on you each and every day. And we just thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, because we know that you are able. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. So now, Lord, as the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart go forward, we ask that we pray together as a family because we know that if we lift it up to you, if it's in your will that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we thank you, Lord, right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
can wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood saved me. The blood redeemed me. The blood washed me. Only need three of y'all, but how many of you thankful for the blood? The blood, the blood. Hi, this is your servant, please, behind the cross on the very drippings of your blood. Allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in thy sight. God, you are my strength. You are my redeemer for your glory alone. I will do anything. I love you so much. You are amazing. In the strong name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And the people of God said, amen. While you're still standing, Luke chapter number 14 in your Bibles. Luke chapter number 14. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 8 from the New International Version of the Bible. Luke chapter 14. Beginning at verse number 8. Kayla, I see you. Luke chapter 14, verse number 8. The Bible says, when someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor. For a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited the both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. Uh, verse number 10, but when you are invited, take the lowest place. So then when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. Yeah, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. The word of God, you may be seated. That's literally your sermon title this morning. Take your seat. Take your seat. Permit me please at the outset of our sermonic discussion this morning, a moment of personal reflection. My mother and my father had my sister and I when they were very young. My parents would have been 18 when they gave birth to my sister in about 22 when they had me. My brother of beautiful sainted memory came much later. My parents made every sacrifice necessary to make sure that the children who they gave birth to in their youth were successful. Anything that I've ever accomplished, anything that I've ever seen, it is all rooted in the grace of God and the sincere sacrifice of my mother and my father. Any degree that I have obtained, any award that I have received, any country that I have visited, any church pulpit that I have been graced to preach, it is all rooted and grounded in the grace of God and the sacrifice of my parents sacrifice putting off their dreams and goals so that we were able to reach our dreams and goals sacrifice having things that they wanted to accomplish themselves but loving their children enough to put those things aside so that we could realize every single thing that we want with our lives if anybody ever sacrificed for you or you have done the sacrifice and you know exactly what I mean. We are uh, the beneficiaries as, as a people of sacrifice. We are the products, if you will, the sum total of what sacrificing really means. Many gave their lives so that we can enjoy the accoutrements that we do now, the houses we live in. The churches we worship in, God have mercy, the, the schools that we have attended were all built on sacrifice. 
Somebody had to give something up in order for you to live the life that you're living right now. Uh, the question is, who do you know that gave something up so that you can enjoy everything that you are indeed enjoying right now? I don't even have to call the road, but you know who they are. The people who we laud in our history, who we celebrate. The names are innumerable and there are indeed some hidden figures whose names never get called. But they made just as many sacrifices for us to enjoy what we are. And I want to assert to you one more time, every single person in this building is the beneficiary of sacrifice. All of us are. How do you know? Because even Jesus sacrificed. The problem is, is that we have allowed their sacrifices to make us lazy, thankless, selfish, privileged, and entitled. I'm going to say that one more time just in case you were sick, texting somebody. Our, our problem is, is that we have allowed their sacrifices to make us lazy, thankless, selfish, privileged, and entitled. And there is nothing worse than to see an entitled generation think that they have made it all by themselves. It is nothing worse than to see people that are just thankless and, and don't turn back and understand that the only reason why we are where we are is because we are standing on the shoulders of giants who sacrificed and gave their lives for us to have what we have right now. And uh, uh, we were taught in our youth, whenever anyone does something for you, you ought to tell them thank you. But I'm at the point now, y'all pray for me. Don't just tell me thank you, but show me thank you. I need to see your thank you in action. God have mercy. Anybody could just say thank you, but it takes a real understanding to show thank you. Unfortunately, y'all, when we talk about sacrifice, even with sacrifice, it is unfortunate that many of us, hear me, are out of place. Well, we are uh, the victims of settling. We are unfortunately the victims of settling and once settling gets on you, it's hard to get it off you. God have mercy. It, I want to help you to understand this morning that you can literally be a half inch out of place and miss everything that God has for you. You can be one step out of place and miss everything that God has for you. And it is unfortunate that we are in a place right now that we are missing out because we have settled in the place where we are instead of looking forward to the place where God really has designed for us in the first place. Y'all got to pray for me because I, I know it's one thing to buy your suit off the rack. But it's another thing to get that suit tailor-made. And, and I'm trying not to get so deeply into tailor-made suits. But once you put one on, it just fits a little different. It, it hugs you in the right places. It curves in the right place. It moves when you move. So here's the thing. Uh, I can bring my tailor-made suit when I can't fit it anymore to the goodwill or donate it to a clothes closet. But it would not matter. Anybody can try to put my suit on, but it won't look as good on them as it does on me because it was not made for them it was made for me and some of you all really don't realize that there are some blessings that are tailor made just for you God have mercy one inch to the left one inch to the right one inch up or down will make the difference how many of you understand with the pain that you've been through the blessing is designed for you some of y'all been like this. Have you ever been like this? What are you looking for? I'm trying to find my keys. I can't, can't find my keys. Have you ever been there? You could be dressed, ready to go, put on good clothes, got on good shoes, smelling good, hair in the right place, glasses on, everything looking good, ready to go, bag in the hand. What you looking for? I can't find my keys. And how many of you know if you can't find your keys, you ain't going nowhere? And it's the same concept with being out of place. You can have everything lined up how you wanted it to be lined up. But if you don't have the right keys. Uh, and so we must argue because we got to understand that there's a difference between a bullet and a bow. Some of us are, are, are understanding. Sometimes we want to have the bullets. Boom. Gone. 
It's already done. But there are some of us, God had to pull us back before he moved us forward. Is there a witness here, somebody? There are some of us, the accuracy is so good because he pulled us back first and then he let us go. And, and y'all, I'm going to just eavesdrop on your conversation with God, but how many of, at least three of y'all in the building can thank God for the season where he pulled you back first before he let you go? Oh God, it, it, it takes a level of maturity to go ahead and praise God for the times when you wanted him to save. Yes, but he pulled you back and say, not yet. I got to move some people out of the way. I got to move some things out of the way. I got to bring you through some stuff so you can appreciate it when I let you go. I know it's easy to praise God when he moves you forward, but where are the people that say, fill it back and praise God because he... Uh, some of us are out of place but then hear me some of us are out of line <laughs> please understand St. Philip that respect is still the order of the day please thank you yes ma'am yes sir respect is still the order of the day uh, I believe Aretha knew what she was talking about R-E-S-P-E-C-T and hear me I'm getting ready to lose you but you got to respect everybody Oh God, I just lost half the church. You, you don't just have to respect me in my white robe this morning and my, my title, but you have to respect everybody. You respect every single person you come in contact with, no matter what their pedigree is, no matter what the creed is, no matter how young they are, how old they are. You have to respect everybody because respect begets respect. Don't talk down to me and then want me to turn around and respect you you've got to respect me too I just lost the church cause I know how we do when we get a little older you go ahead and say the things you think you're gonna say and you think ain't nobody gonna tell you nothing cause you got gray hair the respect goes all the way around you've got to respect everybody and it is amazing to me everybody trying to be so deep and Christian everybody wants to dance and shout and everybody wants to speak in tongues and prophesy everybody wants to be an apostle and a bishop but please understand the rudimentary places of Christianity is not how many tongues you can speak in but Christianity is about how you treat people God have mercy Jesus was questioned on oh, what is the greatest commandment. He said, love the Lord your God with your heart, your soul, your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. On oh, these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. If you can't speak to me, stop speaking in tongues and speak to me first before Respect. We got to treat each other better. I just lost the church because the, the, the worst place we treat people is in church. And you wonder why people don't come to church. And it is amazing to me, Pastor, we need young people in our church. Learn how to treat them better when they come into the house of the Lord. They ain't going to dress like you dress. They ain't going to smell like you smell. They won't look like you look. But treat them right when they come to church. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> Respect. It is a reciprocal relationship. Respect. We have been out of place. We have been out of line. But then there are times when we are out of focus. Sometimes you can't see right. <laughs> you can't see it right. It looks, it, it looks like God, but I'm trying to figure out, is it God? Uh, and it bothers me that you've been on the battlefield for all this time, and you still can't figure out if it's God or not. Trying to figure out, is this really God? Is, is this God? I'm trying to understand if this is God. How many of you understand? If you look at the same burning bush, you must understand when it's God. It will burn, but it will not consume. 
You must understand when it's God, God is a God of order. God will never take you out of order. It is amazing to me. I was moving by the power of the Holy Spirit. No, you were not. You were moving by the power of your own selfish ambition because if you were moving by the power of the Holy Spirit, God would have sent you forth in love and not in hate. What are you saying, Pastor? The Bible says that God is love and you've got to get to a place where you understand sometimes we have jaded the church and jaded the Bible and jaded God's word so much. God have mercy that it is now out of focus. But is there anybody in this building that has been praying for a moment of clarity? I need you to bump your neighbor for the first time and say, neighbor, it's clearing up. It's clearing up. It's clearing up. It's getting ready to all make sense. I'm here to tell you that sooner or later, it's going to turn in your favor. It's getting ready to make sense. Why did I have to go through this? Why was I so full of tears? Why was I so angry? Why was I so down? I dare you to give God praise for the clarity that's coming your way right now. This is what God is doing. God is clearing up your vision for the rest of 2023. He's clearing up your vision. I dare you to go ahead and give God praise because a moment of clarity is coming your way. Listen, I'm getting ready to get in trouble, but I need about 50 people in this building that that can testify. I'm tired of living like this. I'm ready for God to give me the blessing that will not only change my situation, but will change the rest of my life. I'm ready for my family to be blessed. I'm ready for my son to be saved. I'm ready for my daughter to be saved. I'm ready to be financially stable. I dare you to open up your mouth and give God praise. If it's clearing up. I have, I have the remedy this morning. I have the remedy this morning. What's the remedy, Pastor? Well, I came to tell you to take your seat. <laughs> when, when the Bible is clear, and I love this example uh, that Jesus is teaching through this parable. Uh, many have noted it uh, as the African pedagogical method using stories in order to make the, the, the point clear of oh God. And so he uses these stories. He uses, he sits down and tells them these stories to try to make his point clear. He says, when someone invites you to the wedding feast, hmm, do not take the place of honor for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited you will come to you and say, give this person your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the place of least importance. What are you saying pastor? I'm simply trying to help you to understand we serve, watch this, a Jesus who saves us from embarrassment. In other words, he's trying to understand or help us to understand that that every seat is not your seat. I don't want you to get tired on me. I need you to turn to somebody and tell them that ain't your seat. That ain't your seat. That ain't your seat. Every now and then, you've got to understand that God is simply trying to save us from embarrassment. So don't walk in and think that you high on the hog but because of how much money you have and how much money you give. Don't walk in and think that somebody is supposed to bow down to you just because of who you are. Don't walk in and take the place of honor just because of who you are. I don't walk around St. Philip talking about I'm the pastor, I'm the pastor, I'm the pastor. Because if I had to walk around and tell everybody that I'm the pastor, I might not be as much pastor as I thought I was. I don't have to sit in the middle seat to be the pastor. I can go up in the balcony if I want to and still be honored because of who I am. What are you saying? I'm saying sometimes you've got to understand that ain't your seat. That night is a little different uh, in Atlanta now than it was. If it was a million people in Atlanta when I was in seminary, it's two and a half billion folks here now. And uh, there's a meme on social media 
that said, don't come to Atlanta because we full. I agree with him. Uh, uh, it's full in Atlanta. Uh, it's so full that uh, if you uh, have to get home at a certain time, don't leave at 5 o'clock. As a matter of fact, just stay where you are till about 7.30. Because you won't be going nowhere. And uh, the problem is, and I'm working on a sermon series about this, because there's a such thing as a traffic jam. But here's the thing that bothers me. Uh, here me and my Tallahassee, Florida driving self came here and wanted to get into another lane. So I turned my signal on. Y'all wave and tell me, don't turn your signal on. Whatever you do, don't turn your signal on. Because that just tells them to drive a little faster. And, uh, and uh, it's kind of crazy because uh, I've been in a place where I've understand it. And one thing I also understand is that you better stay in your lane. Because if you drift over just a little bit, you will get run over. Here's the thing. I want you to understand the same thing works in the church. Stay in your lane. I'm talking about you, so I ain't going to tell you to turn to your neighbor. Stay in your lane. And some of us need this, this thing that my wife has on her car. It's called lane assist. Because if I'm drifting too far to the left or drifting too far to the right and the car will actually drive me and put me back into the lane and I'm here to tell you that there are some people in church this morning who have been out of place sitting in the wrong seat and I'm here to tell you that you need lane assist you need some help getting back to where you're supposed to be in the first place <laughs> Please understand, I want you to know this, that there is always somebody more distinguished than you. Oh, you sit there if you want to, if you want to, but God, if you sit on your gifts, God will raise up three others that has just as much gifts as what you have. Is there a witness here, somebody? Look at the text. The text is clear this morning. Oh, God, if so, the host who invited you will say, give this person your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the seat of least importance. I like this, y'all. I promise. This is your very last time talking to your neighbor because your neighbor tired of you this morning. But, but, but look at what it says. The Bible is clear this morning when it says, if so, the host who invited you will, will have to come to you and say, give this person your seat. But look at verse number 10. But when you are invited, take the lowest place. I don't know who I'm preaching to here this morning, uh, but all I need is an invitation. <laughs> I don't know who I'm preaching to here, uh, but I, is there anybody here that understands that all I need is a good invitation? I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you've been invited. You've been invited. You've been invited. You've been invited. All you need is an invitation. What are you doing here? I don't know what I'm doing here either, but I got an invitation. Did you RSVP? No, I didn't tell nobody was coming, but I got my invitation in my hand. And I'm so glad that I've been invited to the right place. I'm not trying to crash the party. I've been invited to this party and I'm so glad that God put me in the place God have mercy where I can walk in with my all I need is an invitation and look at what Jesus says he says take the lowest place somebody shout the lowest place how low can you go <laughs> can you go down low <laughs> all the way to the floor he says take the lowest place God have mercy here oh God I know we want to live with the big wigs but sometimes Jesus helps us to understand that I did not come for you to serve me but I came to serve you take the lowest place take the place where nobody else wants to go take the place where nobody else wants to be I dare you to give God praise if you understand it's not about how high you can go but it's about how low can you go he says take the lowest place 
He says, take the lowest place and then the host will see you. And this is what I love about God. This is what I love about God. I love God because God has the privilege and the opportunity to pick you out of a crowd. Oh God, it's not always about the folks sitting in the front. Sometimes God has a way of saying, no, not you, not you, not you, not you, not you, but, but you. So, sometimes God uh, can come and find you where you are and say, not you, not you. And so, listen, I'm not praying for anybody's demise. I'm praying for somebody's elevation because I understand that if I pray for their elevation and not their demise, the spot that they were in is now vacant and it gives me an opportunity to move as well. Is there anybody here? You don't have to sit around and plan on somebody else's demise, but all you have to do is pray that God elevates them. Pray that God gives them an opportunity. Pray that God lifts them up. Pray that God blesses them. Pray that God walks with them every single step of the way take the lowest place I know that's not the word y'all bargain for this morning I'm going to preach it anyway the host knows that you're in the wrong seat so he says now now you don't belong in that place he says I want you to move on up uh, fish don't fry in the kitchen beans don't burn on the grill Took a whole lot of trying just to get up that hill. Now we're up in the big leagues. It's our turn at bat. Long as we hear you and me, baby, and ain't nothing wrong with that because we're... I don't know who I'm preaching to here this morning, but God sent me here with an elevation anointing. God sent me here this morning to tell you that it is time for you to move on up. It is time for you to take your rightful seat. It is time for you to get in the place where God would have for you to be. It's time for you to get out of the lobby and start moving on up every step of the way. I tell you to give God praise in this place if you know that he's moving you on up. I'm done. I'm done. The Bible says, look at what Jesus says. I love it, y'all, and I'm done. He says, those that humble themselves will be exalted. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Those who exalt themselves will be humble. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Ah, oh, God have mercy. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you think that you're being overlooked. No. I saw a meme the other day and made me shout, you're moving from overlooked to overbooked. God has a way of making sure. You, you have to understand that he, he wasn't overlooking you. He was just hiding you and protecting you. He was just making sure that when the next door opens, you will understand that it's your door. And how many of you can understand until the next door opens? I'll praise him in the hallway. I lost some of y'all because you only shout when you get the blessing. But how many of you can shout when you know the blessing is on the way? So I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I came to tell you, take your seat. Take your seat. Bump your neighbor, say neighbor, take your seat. The, the seat that you have to place is a seat of dignity. I'm proud of who I am. And I'm proud of who God made me to be. I'm not lessening myself to make you feel comfortable around me. If I'm good, I'm just going to be good. If I'm great, I'm just going to be great. If I'm anointed, I'm just going to be anointed. You ain't got to feel no ways about it. But it is a seat of dignity. Give God praise if you're proud of who he made you to be. I'm not looking down I'm looking up to the hills from which coming my help all of my help is coming from the Lord it's not only a seat of dignity but take your seat of promotion take your seat of promotion I don't know who I'm preaching to here but I came to tell you promotion is on the way if you've been praying for a promotion I dare you to open up your mouth and give God praise right now I'm praying for God to take me higher than I've ever been before. Open up your mouth and give God praise. If you're praying for God to take you higher than you've ever
never been before. It's the seat of dignity. It's the seat of promotion. But lastly, it's the seat of collaboration. I'm done preaching now. I know I said it was the last time. But give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, I need you. And you need me. And we're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Where are the praises in St. Philip this morning? If the Lord comes to St. Philip looking for people that's not trying to be selfish, but you can praise God for the people on your row. Go ahead and open up your mouth and give God praise. This praise is not for me, but this praise is for you. It's a seat of collaboration. When I come up, you come up. When my door opens, your door opens. When my breakthrough comes, your breakthrough comes. When my healing comes, your healing comes. When my elevation comes, your elevation comes. Open up your mouth. Give God praise in St. Philip. Take your seat. 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 Say it. Say it. Say it. You know when God puts you there Can't nobody kick you out When God puts you there Can't nobody put you out Open up your mouth And give him praise Take your seat Stand on your feet I need two of y'all to praise him like you're blessed this morning. Come on, take your seat. Take your seat. Walk in your rightful place. Walk in the power of your anointing. Mind how you treat people. Treat them with respect, everybody. I've been here since first Sunday in June. And I know everybody from the chief of staff to the maintenance staff. I have more conversations with the maintenance staff than I do with the chief of staff. Because everybody in this building deserves respect. Regardless of age, pedigree, everybody deserves respect. And sometimes we've been in church so long that we forget Bible. God cares how we treat each other. Humble yourself and God will exalt you. Hear me, when you exalt yourself, watch this, I'm getting ready to mess you up. You'll get in place, but you won't stay long. God is looking for a generation that doesn't mind humbling themselves. I'm done when I tell you this. 
and I'm going to get in trouble when I say this, but I love y'all anyway. Take your seat instead of grabbing your chair. You missed it. A couple of weeks ago, everything was about grabbing your chair, your chair, your chair. Get a chair, knock him across the head, bam, hit him with a chair, hit him with a chair. And it was cute and it was funny, but I, I only laughed so much because you don't understand how they celebrate us grabbing chairs instead of taking our seat. If you take your seat, you'll never have to grab a chair. If you sit in your rightful places, you'll never have to do it. What is your seat? We hear it all the time. God have mercy. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. We hear it all the time. Get your own chair and grab it to the table. Sit at the tables. Make the decisions. Walk in the places where God has for us to walk. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. And I want you to lift your hands in a posture to receive. And for about 60 seconds, not even to be selfish, watch this. I want you to pray for you. I want you to pray for you. I want you to pray that God will align your life. God, if I'm too high, take me down. If I'm too low, bring me up. If I'm where you want me to be, hold me in position. Come on and pray. Come on, pray. Pray for yourself. yourself. sing it if you know it I need you decision this morning I want you to come forward this morning to receive a blessing that will not only change your situation but will change the rest of your life the doors of the church are open for you and we're here to receive you number one if you want to be saved how shall you be saved believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved secondly you're looking for a church home praise the Lord we love you already we've just been waiting for you to come and be a part of our family third of all maybe you've been away for a minute and you're ready to return into full fellowship with St. Philip Church, you can come. Last but not least, you're saying, I need prayer for my situation. Whoever you are, let nothing hinder you from coming forward this morning. And if indeed you don't want to walk by yourself in the spirit of collaboration, grab someone by the hand and say, I'll walk with you as we sing. Come on, join our family. You need me. Come on. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with, Stand with me. Agree with me. Agree with me. We're all. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will. It is His will that every, that every need be supplied. You are. You are. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. There's room for you still. I don't want you to miss 
this opportunity this morning. God is speaking to your heart. You can feel God moving. I know you can. You feel God moving in your spirit right now. You know what God is commissioning your heart to do. You're just nervous. You're scared. Don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Make the move. Take the step. Join the family. We want to have you here as a part of us. We want to have you as a part of our family. Make your way here. Come on, clap for those that are here. Clap for those that are here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Keep clapping. Come on, give them hard court advantage. Come on. They're clapping for you this morning. Come on. Come on, come on. They're clapping for you this morning. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Survive. Hallelujah. You are. I pray for you. You pray for me. You pray for me. I love you. I love you. Need you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you. I won't harm They're you. They're still coming. You need to keep With coming too. Words from my mouth. No matter who you are, come I on and come. I need you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. You pray. Love you. I love you. I need you to survive. I need you to survive. Won't harm you. I won't harm you. With words. With words from my mouth. Love you. I love you. I need you to survive. I, I always make one more call and push for those of y'all that's ready for me to move on. There's always somebody here say, well, if he, if he quit now, I can wait till next week. No, no, no. That's you. That's you this morning. I want you to make that move this morning. If you feel it right here, you feel it right here. You feel it. Your chest is beating. Your heart is moving. If you feel it, you're just nervous. Some of y'all come up to me after service and say, Pastor, I wanted to come. I'm talking to you. Make your way here this morning. Make your way here this morning. I promise you, if you step out, they'll start clapping for you. I promise you. We believe in home court advantage here at St. Philip Church. Come on, all over the building. I want you to sing. Come on. I pray for you. All over you. I pray. I pray for you. You pray for me. You pray for me. I love you. I love you. I need you. I need you to survive. I want with words with words from my mouth I love you I love you I need you to survive I pray for you pray for me you pray for me I love you I love you I need you to survive won't harm you. I won't harm you with words with words from my mouth I got I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. Good morning, Pastor. We have joining this morning Barbara Morgan and Rev. Ad Reverend Adela Brewster. Come on, clap your hands for them. Joining this morning, we have Sister Karen Rivera. Amen. Joining this morning, we have John Young, Ashley Brown, Jalen, and Paris. All right. Joining this morning, we have Sister Shy Bugs. Amen. <laughs> Special prayer this morning, Valerie McGibney, Alex Dancy, Mikeyella, and Derek <laughs> the Third Summers. Amen. God, thank you. We consider it an honor and a privilege because of your grace being sufficient and your mercy being everlasting. 
God, we receive these individuals to our family in love. God, we pray for those that need prayer and whatever dynamic they need prayer for. I pray, God, that every single one of us will take our rightful place and walk in our rightful anointing and sit in our rightful seat. The place where you have placed us, oh God, because of our humility. Now, God, I'm going to pray this prayer because I know the results of what it could be. So hear me, God, and I want you all to hear me as well. God, don't humble us, <laughs> but teach us to humble ourselves. Y'all missed it. I know you did. But God, are we all right? In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I know y'all missed that it's fine but when you start praying for the Lord to humble you humble you will be <laughs> praise the Lord I want, I want these individuals to go and gather their belongings and I want those that are joining to meet in the welcome center but sister Pinky if we can take communion please I know we're doing it. I see you, Sister Curry. If we can allow, I want y'all to take communion with us today, okay? So if I can ask that you all will immediately, after you take communion, to see Sister Pinky, Sister Curry, and they will be able to receive you, receive you in the Welcome Center, please. I really want you all to take communion with us today. Praise the Lord. You who do truly and earnestly repent of your sins are in love and charity with your neighbor. You intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, walking henceforth in his holy ways, drawn near with faith. Take these creatures of bread and wine to your comfort. Stewards, trustees are on their way now to the altar. To share in the Lord's table. Elder Eiffel, can you join us? Dr. Knight, can you join us at the altar, please? Sing it if you know it. Way back. The blood. Oh, the stick on. From day. From day. Today. It will never. It's power. I want y'all to sing this part. Come on, come on, help us sing. It reaches. It reaches to the highest. And it flows to the lowest. your humble confessions of the almighty God by meekly kneeling upon your knees if you can the general confession almighty God father of our Lord Jesus Christ make of all things and judge of all men we acknowledge and be well our manifold sins and wickedness which we time to time most grievously have committed by thought word and deed against your divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us we do earnestly repent and are hardly sorrows for these our misdoings the remembrance of them is grievous unto us have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. 
most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy to give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and that instituted in this holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, I most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. When the same night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you shall come together, eat in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This is the blood of the New Testament shed for you and shed for many for the remissions of sins. As often as you shall come together, drink in remembrance of me. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, all over the Lord's sanctuary. Let us take it together. Take and eat with thanksgiving in your heart. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hold it as high as you can without spilling it this morning. God, we want the world to know that we are covered in the blood. Take and drink. stewards, trustees, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for all that you continue to do to make St. Philip great. Thank you for your dedication and commitment. Thank you for your service to the kingdom of God. All of our ministers, you may now rise and go in peace. May the peace of our God go with you as these go. Let others give God praise. <laughs> Come on, give your neighbor the right hand of fellowship this morning, fist bump, whatever you're comfortable with. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And all of the church said, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many of you just had an amazing time in worship this morning? I know I did. Be safe. Now, anybody got some barbecue? Barbecue going on. Praise the Lord. All right. Need some chicken, some ribs, some red cups with some Kool-Aid in it, of course. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend. Come on, stand to your feet. How many of y'all are converted Buffalo fans? Now, Colorado Buffaloes. Now, y'all converted now, y'all. Y'all don't even know Colorado had a football team until Dion got there. Shout out to Coach Prime on his first win. And uh, I think FAMU has a game today in Miami. Praise the Lord. Playing against Jackson State. And uh, the Falcons have a game coming up real soon. It's not today, but it's coming up real soon. Shout out to the Atlanta Falcons, I guess. And... Uh, I don't know if ignorant is a word, if ignorant, ignorant is a word, but on November 26th, anywhere close to that date, when we come and play the Saints, when y'all play the Saints, I'm going to be ignorant. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Enjoy your week to the fullest. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs>
now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of you, now, henceforth, and forevermore. And we all responded by singing.